Hi everyone, Dmitry here, and in this tutorial we are going to cover a very exciting topic, creating custom transitions between artboards in mockup. By the end of this video, you will learn how you can change this default transition into this fancy custom one. So let's do this. Let's go to File, New from Template, and let's choose Desktop and Web Template. With my artboard created, I'm going to press Ctrl or Command 0 to zoom out and reveal the whole artboard. I'm going to close up the preview window for now since I'll be doing the page design and there is no interactivity yet. Let's begin with adding a background element, create a rectangle with the 950 by 775 pixels, change its coordinates to 0, 0 and change the color to black, rename the rectangle to BG. This will come in handy when we will get to the editing transitions, so that we can keep track of who is who in the transition editor. Next, let's create the side menu background. Create a rectangle with 270 by 780 pixels, change its coordinates to minus 10 for the X axis and minus 4 pixels for the Y axis. Increase the radius to 16 pixels and change the color to something appealing. I picked dark velvet, but you can choose whatever color you want. Now I'm going to import a cool fashion model picture I got from pixabay.com. So import my model.png to the scene, set its coordinates to 725 on the X and minus 77 for the Y. Cool, something's building up around here. Now I'm going to import social media icons and the search icon onto my prototype here. I'm going to lay them out so they look nice and cozy on their places. I'm going to resize the icons and to maintain constant ratio I'll click on this little lock right here and change the dimensions of each icon to 30 pixels. Drag those down here. Change the search icon dimensions to 30 as well. Put it up there and align it to the bottom icon. Nice! I've got another icon to import that will act as a user avatar. I will give it a size of 30 pixels. And I'm going to put it somewhere here. 70 pixels on the X axis. That will be my main coordinates for the rest of the menu. Now let's create the menu items. Hit text, resize the text bounding box a little, change the font to Roboto, make it bold, size to 15, color to white, and name the first entry History. Hit the Fit to Text Size button, Duplicate the entry, drag it down a little, add it 60 pixels and name it Team. Rename it to Team. Duplicate it again, pull it down, rename this one to Services. Duplicate it once again, rename it to Contacts. See? Instant Karma, even I forgot to rename my text, but trust me, I'm doing my best here. Now I'm going to group my menu, Ctrl or Command G, in case you forgot, and rename the group to Menu Items. Whoops, almost forgot to give my user icon some proper company. Create new text and type me. Kinda short, but it makes the picture. Apply the same size, font, color and everything as the menu entries. Place the text next to its icon and group them. Give it a name, let's say User Info. Good. Don't forget to make a footer text. Type in 218 My Studio or whatever you like. Now let's create some content. Hit the text object, 
change the color to white so we can see what are we doing here. Type in company timeline. Fit the text size to get everything back in order. Size 15. Now change its X coordinates to 320 and the Y to 150. Lower the opacity to 90. Good. Now I'll create a header. Text object goes here. White color. Type in history. Crank the size to 60. Fit to text size. Change the coordinates to 320 on the X and 180 on the Y. Okay, next I'm gonna create the content. I'll resize the text object so it looks more like a text block on any regular website. Pick the white color for our text. I'm going to put some lorem ipsum text to fill out my object here. I'm sure you can do that yourself. With this one, I'll resize it a little bit more. There you go. One more thing we need to do, create a divider. That will be a rectangle with 425 by 5 pixels. I'll make it the same color as the side menu by color picking the color. There we go. Also be sure to put our divider under our model picture. I'm doing that with this little button here. Aha, uh -huh, forgot to rename the menu background. Fixed that. For more comfort I'm going to rename the content text to main text. Align the divider with the content text so everything is super cool. Okay, now I'm going to make some Hoover interactivity on the menu items. Click on the first menu item, hit S, in the pop-up dialog give the symbol a name, hit create, repeat with the rest of the menu items, now double click on the first menu symbol, cool, we are inside of the symbol. So now I'm going to make another artboard that will correspond to the hoovering state. Duplicate the artboard and change the text color to somewhat grayish. I'm going to copy the hex code to reuse in the rest of the menu items. Now click on the first artboard's text, click on the action, drag the hover in arrow to the second artboard, go to the second artboard text, click on the action, select hover out and drag it to the first artboard. Great. Now repeat this with the rest of the menu items. I'm going to fast forward a little to skip the boring routine stuff. Now we have an awesome page here. Let's make it even more awesome by creating a cool custom transition. In order to do that, let's duplicate the existing artboard. It'll be a starting point for the second state of our website. Now I'm guessing you watched the previous tutorial and you understand the artboard's mechanic. If not, I really recommend to do that. But if you did already, great. Now on with our website. So I'm going to move my menu items group to the left and set its opacity to zero. I'll leave my user info group untouched. This will keep the feeling like we entered a different page. Now I'll move the menu background rectangle way to the left. Okay, it's gone. Select the text, the header and the subheader. Give them the opacity of 0, move them somewhere here, there you go. Select the model and the black background rectangle and move them to the left somewhere here, I guess. That looks nice. Now I'm going to move the divider to the other side so the transition will look more awesome and change its color to black. Now I need a new text block and a new header. I'll make a copy of the original ones to speed things up a bit. Remember, this is not an instance of the original ones, I have them here already on this artboard. Those are fresh copies, the contents of which I'm going to change in a second. But first, change the color to black, move them to another place near our divider, done, there. These copies will be the starting point for new content. So I'll change the header to the team and rename the text so I will differentiate it from the other header and I'll rename the text block as well. I'll keep its contents the same, just for the purpose of this tutorial. 
Great, next I'll make a button so we can return back to our first artboard. Create a text object, type in return to main, change this color to white, I'll put it over here, give it a rotation value of minus 90 degrees, I'll align the text by the vertical center. Now I want to make it interactable and have a hover effect. So I'll make a symbol from it, hit S, enter my symbol's name, enter the symbol editing mode. Now I'll click the artboard and resize it a little since I need some room for the arrow icon, which I'm going to import from the project folder. I will upload the folder and put a link somewhere below. OK, imported the arrow, resize it and I'll put it here. Great. Maybe resize it a little more so there's some room for animation to occur. Now I'll duplicate the artboard, move my text to the arrow. Cool. Now here's a little trick. In order to make the whole artboard clickable, instead of only the text area, I'll switch the interactable option off on all my objects here, then click on the artboard and change it to interactable instead. Now all pixels in the artboard are interactable. So I'll click on the Add Action button, select who we're in and drag it to the second artboard. Do the same with the second artboard, but change it to who we're out. Done. Let's exit the symbols editing mode. We're almost ready, but first let me explain something. In order for the transition to occur, I need to have the same object on all my artboards, but with desired properties applied to it like the opacity and the position, as we have here. So I will duplicate the second artboard's description header and return to main button to the first artboard, move my button to the left and the rest to the right, and change their opacity to zero. Finally, now we got everything set up and ready to make the transition. Now I could select the team button to be my call to action, but I'm going to make all my buttons activate the transition just for the sake of this tutorial. So I'll click on my group, hit the action button, select the click action and drag it to the second artboard. Notice the gray arrow on the top. This is your transition indicator. You can see the symbol's name, its way of activating the transition. It's set to click as you can see here. And I'll create the action that will return back to our first artboard. This is where our button here comes in handy. Select the button, hit actions, select the click action, drag it onto the first artboard. Now the second transition is created, as you can see here. Now let's preview what we have until this moment. Hit the preview button, I'll maximize the window so we can see everything. My second artboard was active, so that's why I see it on my preview window. But that's okay, let's test out the hover of the return button. Everything works fine. Let's click on it. And now you can see the transition was executed, which by itself is not that bad as I imagined, but we need to do something more awesome. The same default transition here when we click on the menu items. Let's exit the full screen preview and enter the transition editor. In order to do that, click on the transitions arrow, the one you want to modify. Bam, the editor opens up. I'm going to resize it so I won't miss my elements and have an overall picture now, here are all my layers that have any changed properties. In our case, the opacity and the X coordinates, and their animation duration and easing types that they use. Now, all of them have the default easing applied. So let's change that. Click on the easing indicator, a menu will pop up with all available easing methods. Mostly, I use the easy in out method, since it slowly speeds up in the beginning and gradually slows down at the end. I'll stretch the animation's endpoint so it's about one second long. By the way, you can multi-select the animation and drag it on the timeline. That's quite handy when you have a lot of properties and they need to be moved together. Also, you can change the easing type by hitting the corresponding numbers on your keyboard while the easing window is opened. Now back to editing. I prefer linear type of easing for the opacity and the ease in out for the X movement. Another neat little feature is bulk changing the easing types on multiple properties. Just select your object, hit on any easing indicator and choose your preferred easing type from the menu. 
Now, when all durations and easing types are ready, I'll begin to place them in order I want them to be animated. So first comes the menu items, second the description text and the header with the subheader, next the image of the model with the black background, the second header with the description text and the divider. Now let's see what it looks like. And it looks like it needs some tweaking. I'm going to fast forward here. Mostly this is a process of trying different variations until you are perfectly satisfied with the look of your transition. Beautiful. Now let's make the return to main transition. The technique is the same, choose the easing type, change the duration as desired, play around with the animation order and there you have it, a nice custom transition that will definitely bring some sweet eye candy to your prototypes. Feel free to experiment and come out with exciting new ways for your transition. Don't forget to watch other tutorials and have fun using mocap. Cheers!